So with all the craziness going on in the world, gents, I think we can agree. This world needs better leaders. But what makes for a good leader, especially in a time of uncertainty, in a time of crisis, in a time of chaos? Lesson number one, make the right decision, not the popular decision. This is difficult. Even if you're in charge, your entire team wants to go this direction. It's easy to agree with them. It's easier just to go along, but you know you need to go a different path. Gentlemen, personal example. My daughter wanted to do a sleepover a while back. I am against this. My wife is for it. They're family friends. She doesn't feel there's any risk of the virus and all that stuff. I am going to be the bad guy here. And I'm saying no. I'm putting my foot down because I feel there's an invisible enemy out there. I know that this is the right decision to err on the side of caution. And you've got to make difficult decisions like that all the time, especially in your business where the work's already done. They've set it up. So it's going to be an easy decision, but you know, you've got to take it in this other path and it's going to require people to redo work. People are going to be upset, but if you know it's the right decision, gentlemen, you've got to do it. Lesson number two, lead by example. I learned as a young second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps, you never ask anything of anyone that you wouldn't do yourself. So you want people to work on Sundays? Guess what? You should be the first man there. You should be there making coffee for those guys on the floor. Yeah, you're going to be up in the office managing. That's your job. That's what you got to get done. But if you need to get production up, if you need to make the turnaround in the company, then you need to be the person leading from the front, not in the back telling people what just to do. Lesson number three, a good leader genuinely cares about his people. I've seen so many bad managers out there. They don't give a all they care about is profit and the numbers, and those are important, but not at the expense of your people. You need to know your people. If you manage one person, you manage five people, you manage 25, you manage 25,000. I'm not saying you got to know everyone's name at that level, but you should know what's going on. You should have systems in place so that you realize your people are your greatest asset. And I know for me, you know, I know a lot about my people. I, I, it's something that I set up time to be able to get to know them, to know what their pains are, to understand what their real needs are, what their real concerns are, how I can help to alleviate some of their worries so that they can do a better job. A good manager understands, again, his people are his greatest resource. The next tip to lead in a time of chaos is to bring order to disorder. What am I talking about here? A good manager gets everyone in the boat rowing in the same direction. Because guys, it is so easy for our people to get distracted. You may just manage three people, but what you may find is they each have three different, very different priorities, and they don't understand where they fit into the big picture. So imagine if you're managing 30 or 300. Guys, that's when it gets really bad. And all of a sudden, you're wasting effort. You are wasting energy. And in a time of crisis, you need people to be focused in on a laser, on the number one project that's going to bring the company in money, that's going to turn the company around. And that's what a good manager does. He gets everyone rowing in the same direction. Now, this next tip to lead through uncertainty isn't really talked about, but I think it's critically important. And that is to have peers, to have companions, because leadership is incredibly lonely. Many of you guys know what I'm talking about. You have your own business and you can't talk to anybody. You can't talk to your spouse about this. Can't talk to your employees. They don't want to hear you complain. If you are a leader, if you are the head of a company, if you manage a lot of people, this can be something that it's frustrating. And especially now that we're isolated, that we are working from home, guys, there is a big problem. I think just coming up of all these business owners, all these leaders that don't have anyone that they can bounce ideas off of. So to solve this, I've created a mastermind. I'm going to link to it down in the bottom. Fortune favors the bold is what I'm calling it. And I want to get together a group of other business owners that have employees that are dealing with the current problems and want to be in a mastermind group where they can be around positive energy, where they can, with no judgment, lay out, hey, these are the problems I've got to make. I'm going to have to lay people off. I'm going to have to, you know, cut salaries. I'm going to have to change the direction of the company. And I'm scared. And imagine to be able to say that and to be able to talk with other business owners who are unique, who have really cool skill sets, can give you different viewpoints, offer advice, and support you in the decisions you need to make. I just feel right now is a pivotal point when you've got so many people, so many businesses that are going to go under, not because they have to, but because the business owner, the leader is incapable. He just doesn't know that there are other people out there that want to help him. So guys, if you're at all interested, check out the application down below. It's for a mastermind. Fortune favors the bold. The next characteristic of a good leader during a time of chaos the ability to remain calm. When everyone else is panicking, 
when everyone else is jumping all over the place, running around like chickens with their heads cut off. You have the ability to remain calm. And this is something you have to practice. Most of us aren't born this way. Most of us, we want, we're, we're nervous, we're scared, we're anxious, but we realize, okay, I can't control everything, but I can control a few things. I can control my breathing. I can control the way I react to the situation. And I'm going to take a second to breathe and to think, to look around and to calmly assess what's going on. And that's the key. When you remain calm, you don't let your nerves, you don't let your emotions drive you because that's where bad decisions happen. When you make something that's a bad decision, instead you hold off on making a decision, maybe for a few minutes, maybe just for a few seconds. But that little bit of time gives you the chance to gain, to get your wits back about you and all of a sudden make a better decision. Next up, let's talk confidence. A good leader has confidence. He believes in himself. And that's what confidence is. It's not that you are always right. It's not that you are the best. It's simply you understand your strengths, you know your weaknesses, and you're ready to use them and meet the challenge ahead. It's not arrogance. Arrogance is simply where you are way overconfident and you don't truly understand your strengths and your weaknesses, and that can get you in trouble. A leader is confident and he's also humble because he knows that he's going to have to reach out to others, that he has to have a strong team and that he's going to have to have to ask for help. Let's talk about being honest and transparent. Now, to be honest is to tell the truth. Very important as a leader that you don't lie. You don't have a good enough memory and eventually people are going to catch you and then it's going to undermine all of your credibility. But you're also transparent, meaning that you tell the whole truth. Because there are ways to simply tell one thing that is true, but to omit things, to leave things out. No, you want to be transparent. If you think other people can use this information, you want to make it readily available. Even if, in a way, it kind of makes you look not as infallible as you would like. We all would like to look perfect, but here's the thing, is a confident, a strong leader, especially in crisis, makes the information, he makes it known so that everyone out there is able to see what's on the table and they're able to see, hey, he's a human being as well. He makes mistakes, but he quickly corrects and fixes himself. Now, this next one is really important and a good leader manages expectation. It's human nature that we want a quick fix for things. We want it to be over. We want to move on. We want things to have a quick conclusion, especially when they're painful, when they're going to hurt. You've got to manage expectations. If you know what's going on right now, the magnitude of it is incredibly high, is incredibly large, is going to affect all these people. You owe it to them to let them know to the best of your ability, what you see and what you think is going to happen. You don't want to alarm them. You're not there to scare them, but you want to be open with them. You want to let them know. You want to set that expectation because if they think that this problem is going to be solved within a week, within two weeks, then they are not going to be prepared and it's going to set them up for disappointment and failure later on. The next lesson on how to lead in a time of uncertainty is to understand the plan never survives contact with the enemy. I think that one's from Clausewitz. What I like better though, is that the plan is nothing, but planning is everything. So as we were gearing up with 3rd Battalion 1st Marines to go into Iraq, that was something that was said again and again. And I saw this in action whenever we were going through Nazaria and I can tell you everything fell apart that we had planned. But guess what? We had gone through that plan over a hundred times. We knew exactly how much fuel, how much ammunition, where we needed to be. We had maps of everything and we were able to quickly build out a new plan within minutes so that we were able to adapt to the situation. So many business leaders, they get stuck in on their systems, on the way things should work in their models. They, the way, guys, you got to understand that the real world is not something that can be modeled and your ability to be able to meet with, you know, an obstacle, with a problem, and then to be able to find a way out of it. That is what makes you uniquely human. And you need to leverage that as a great leader so that you can overcome situations, which you couldn't have expected. But as a human being, you can find a way to overcome. Next up, gents, surround yourself with competent people. The best people you can have on your team, this is key, this is critical. And just as critical is to remove incompetent people. This one, very difficult, sometimes very painful because you may have had someone on the team that, yeah, as things were going great with the company, their incompetence never showed because everyone's looking good. But guys, in a time of crisis, this can sink the ship. And this is very difficult. You like this guy. He does a decent job, but you find in a time of crisis, 
he locks up. He's not capable of making decisions. He is in a leadership role and he needs to be relieved. He needs to be removed. Otherwise, he can sink the entire ship. And when it comes to rules, gents, don't be afraid to throw some of them right out the window. Again, a lot of these rules, a lot of the SOPs, a lot of the ways your company has always done it. This was created when we were going through a bull market, when everything was great. We are in a recession. We are in a painful time when painful decisions have to be made and you're going to have to go back. Do not be a slave to a system that's going to sink you. You need to go through, you need to relook at everything and don't be afraid to scrap rules which are useless. Now, with all this, gentlemen, don't forget, as a leader, it's important that you over communicate. You cannot be clear enough when it comes to the directives, when it comes to what's important, when it comes to what to throw out the plate to make sure that you're engaging with your people. And it goes both ways. I tell everyone on my team, you're responsible to push up that an email sent is not mission accomplished because when you're in the office and you're around each other, okay, you can actually just yell at somebody across say, Hey, did you get that? Yeah. You know, that isn't happening anymore. So you sent that email. You thought that they got it. They never received it because they're now working from home and they had bad internet or they're on a different time zone. Guys, miscommunication, this leads to a project that should be done in two hours going on for two to three days, if not two weeks. You want to nip that in the bud. You want to press that people on your team that you are show, leading by example and you over communicate. Now, a great way to communicate is actually to have accurate measures that are reported on a daily basis. So, if in your company, you don't know what the KPIs are, the key performance indicators for your job, for everyone else's job that's under you, and if you're not looking at that information, you need to. These are just the simple numbers numbers, the simple bits of information and numbers don't lie. So, you're able to see and you're able to measure things and it's a very effective way of communicating. And with all the doom and gloom guys, don't forget a good leader can leverage the power of humor. I'm not saying you got to be cracking jokes, but I am saying don't underestimate the power of levity to break up the situation, to use a misdirection to all of a sudden people are like paying attention to what you have to say. Great example. Remember in the movie, Saving Private Ryan, when everyone's about to shoot themselves in the group and everyone's yelling screaming and the captain gets up and he asks, what's the pool? And everyone's like, what is this guy talking about? Why isn't he, you know, defusing the situation? All of a sudden, they wonder what's going on and everyone's quiet because everyone really does wonder because they've been asking for months, what does the captain, what did he do before the war? And he reveals that and all of a sudden, it changes the framing. And all of a sudden, it grabs, he, he is a master at that point of grabbing their attention and defusing the situation and really revealing everything for what it is. Now, as a leader, the responsibility of the final decision rests with you, but there are people that you can lean on to help make a better decision. First up, experts. Experts are really good in their chosen path. They don't always see the big picture and that's what you got to be careful of, but experts can oftentimes shine the light on certain things maybe you didn't think about and they can help reinforce a direction you want to go. I also recommend that you have somebody with a contrary opinion, someone that is not a yes man, someone that will bring up objections and will try to fight for the other side. Why? Because you want this stuff brought up to you before you make the decision and then you find out, oh, I wish we would have thought of that. I wish we would have thought of that. That is their job to go through and to find all the reasons why your decision is wrong. Now, this next saying, one of my favorites and that is fortune favors the bold. Third Marines, you know what I'm talking about. Guys, we are in a situation in which fear, chaos, uncertainty is in abundance. And guess what? It is shrinking people's minds and their viewpoints. They are focused on what's in front of them and they are worried. They're scared. And this right here is preventing them from taking risk. Now, we take risks all the time in business, but at this point, a lot of business owners, their minds have shrank and they've reduced the risks they're taking. And as such, they're not going to be able to get out of the situation because they're just simply chasing their tail and their circle. They don't realize that if they just looked up, and they went in this direction, they could get off of the hot plate, that they could get out of the current situation they're in. And that's what you need to do. You need to have the courage to take risk. Yes, that everything seems like it's chaotic and risky right now. But gentlemen, if you don't take risks, if you are not bold in this time period, then you are going to miss out on the opportunities that are out there. And I can tell you, opportunity is out there in abundance for those that have the courage to go out there and grab it. 
All right, gents. So what did I miss? What would you add? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget, I'm linking to my mastermind. Fortune favors the bold down in the description. This is something I'm doing because I am passionate about working with other entrepreneurs. I used to do this years ago, but I'm excited to actually get to know other business owners. That's why I've got the application there. So if you manage people, if you have employees, if you are in a situation in which you don't want to be surrounded by negative thought, you want to have positive energy from other business owners. And you simply know that, hey, being able to talk about your problems for other people to be able to tell you their thoughts, their insights, and to be able to help you create really better decisions for your company. Guys, I'm excited. So check out the application. I'm linking to it down in the description. That's it, guys. Take care. And if you want another video, I've got you covered right here. And in fact, I don't even know. No, of course I know. This is a good video right here. Go check it out. I had a lot of fun with it. Talking about the importance of routines. You should have one.